Okay, here we are for part two of the gigantic Photoshop tutorial. And this is zoomed in on what the final product looks like in the um, in the in the tutorial that I found online. Uh, the only thing that I've really got left to do is I want to uh, tighten up the uh, the text just a little bit. I want to add these two little buttons, and then we're supposed to have these three div boxes down here have a nice little gradient fade from the top down. I'll show you how we can do that with some uh, some backgrounds because it's a little non-standard stuff. Um, and so I'm going to do that and then there's a little bit to do with the footer. So there's not too much Photoshop left to do. So back here in my design in Photoshop, uh, got all kinds of crazy stuff we need to worry about. Uh, first off, the, the text right here, I'm not sure that I quite like what I did with it, but I'm also finding that I am a little unorganized now. Um, oh no, that's not true. I did have it nice and organized. Do you use folders a lot in your layers panels? I didn't, I didn't have enough to need them. No. Really? Not right now. For, well, for this tutorial, I've, I'm up to about, about 20 or so. I don't even think it's that many, but there are a lot of layer I tend to styles. Yeah, I think the big thing is, what if somebody else had to come along and use your H your Photoshop file later? Would they be able to figure out what the heck it was you were doing? <coughs> so, I, I the only other things I really want to do with this is just space it out a little bit. Um, with text, there are a couple of fun things that you can do to it to make it a little bit nicer. Um, Apple sort of uh, did a, had a nice little typography thing that they would do with all of their sans serif, or all of their serif fonts in some of their old advertisements. They'd make them all 90% wide um, so that they would shrink up just a little bit. All the letters were just a little bit taller. It was subtle enough that it was not that noticeable, but the overall effect was that the letters seemed a little bit more grand, a little bit more um, important as you read them. Um, so I think I've done that here. Yeah, all of these are already 90% wide, so I did that already. Yeah. I think I did it the first one and they all just followed suit. So then the, the next thing that I wanted to do to this was they wanted to have a couple of little buttons down here. And so I'm going to grab a nice little rounded rectangle, three pixels, and we're going to create a little box here. Did we create a style for this? No, not for that. Oh, I think this is what I had previously. So the style for this is located a little bit higher up. In the in the design, let me find it. That's not it. Those the arrows. Yeah, these are the buttons. They have. They they want to add drop shadow, inner glow, gradient overlay, and a stroke to all of these. All of these buttons. Um, what's that? It should be normal. Um, this, yeah. Whenever you're doing layer size, I usually do half of them mm -hmm. on one one thing. Um, and a lot of them, are, I think I've explained this before. They're very subtle. Um, they're not much change, but as as you add all of them together, it creates a nice effect. You can take off any one of them, and it probably wouldn't be that big a deal. Um, so I've got this little box here. Here it is. I'm going to create. That's my slider. I'm going to create a subfolder in here. We call it buttons and throw this guy in there and now it's a lot of layer effects uh, what's the first one I forget okay a little bit of a drop shadow I I should have this up the other screen so with this one we're gonna do drop shadow change the angle changing the size is what gives it its fuzziness 
So they want that, I believe, down to zero. And let me keep checking back and forth. Yeah, that's zero. The distance is just a little bit. The opacity is knocked way down. So there's not too much to the to the drop shadow. Then a nice little inner glow, just a white 40% inner glow set on normal. Normal. It starts off with this little cream tan color. I never really cared much for that. Uh, pull that back a little bit. What would they have for this? Zero and seven. I don't think that's much different than what I've got. Okay. You can see there what it is I'm creating. Um, where's the rest of it go? That's inner glow. Now the gradient, they've got basically a three stoppered. Uh, gradient on here that goes uh, there's is green um, I've sort of chosen uh, a more pink uh, color scheme in honor of Sarah Yay. since she was loud about that so I need to create a gradient overlay and have you guys played with gradients before making your own everybody's cool with that okay Lou all right in the gradient overlay if you click this little drop down you've got some pre-built gradients um, most of them are really tacky and awful but what you can do instead instead of hitting the drop down if you actually click on the gradient itself you go into the gradient editor where down here you can start to play with these sliders and you can add new colors and kind of do whatever you'd like with them oops let me get back into that um, so you can push these sliders around kind of play with them. You can add as many new ones or take them, take away ones. All you have to do is click to add a new one, click and pull it down, oops, to get rid of it. These are your these little diamonds are the midway points. So if you pull one really close, you end up getting a much more solid gradient rather than at 50%. Oops, come back. And then the top sliders actually control your opacity. So you could have one fade out, one side fade out into nothing. Um, and you can add, so for example, I could have it fade out into nothing in the middle. And then the black that's the original color of the shape shows through. I don't really want that. There we go. So there's the button. Uh, I think the last thing that they wanted was a stroke on this. And by default, in older versions of Photoshop, I think it's a three pixel red stroke. Um, I'm going to add this nice little one pixel, I don't know, dark blues, you know, dark purple ish type color. Yeah, that looks like sufficiently tacky. I can live with that. As long as Sarah likes it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright then. So what I always suggest doing is when you make a, a really nice style like this is you save it to the styles panel. You just take the effect. You can throw it out. Oh, apparently you can't throw it in there anymore. Take this. Create a, create a new one. I'll call it pink buttons. And then I can just apply that style, all of these layer effects to any other object on the page. And in fact, way back down here, you see that there's supposed to be two of these buttons. So, uh, sign up. Let's see, that should be white. Really big. Do something more fun with this than just regular old. 
it's a little hard to read, isn't it? Um, if you ever have trouble with, with text being illegible because it's it's light on a light background, or in this case, the gradient causes some illegibility problems, I usually add a drop shadow, or this one might work, inner shadow. Uh, if you set the dis all the distances and, and size and stuff down to one, you make it look like it's cut out of the thing that it's sitting on. on. Um, you Stroke will work as well, yeah. Um, whee, that one's huge. Yeah, there you go, that's a little bit nicer. Uh, I could do the same stroke as was here. That's a little bit nicer. And then, uh, sometimes, uh, I think a drop shadow might actually look nice on this. There, just a really subtle drop shadow. And it looks incredibly girly. <laughs> but really, it's, I, I would have done this even if it hadn't been pink. It was just... Yeah, it's just the color choice that I'm really talking about here. Um, you know what? I'm not done. I want this to be spaced out a little bit. I think the characters are a little too close together. Not that far. Good lord. Okay, that's a little better. Uh, I don't think this button needs to be quite that big, but I'd like to have uh, like it to take up the f as much space as possible. Um, oh, also, have you ever seen this? You can expand and collapse the layer effects in the layers panel. Um, those bug the crap out of me after a while because they take up so much space. I'm going to take these two layers and duplicate them. Because the next one is supposed to say, learn more. You know, there's supposed to be a little arrow on that. I could go out and make an arrow, or I could just do something like that. Whatever you want to do. What do you think of the positioning on this? I think I'm okay with it. Buttons are done. Find out more. Sorry, the find out more was not quite perfectly centered vertically. I need to move that one around. Oh, I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to do to this. If you want to take the gradient, or oh, the big slider box, I think that could use a stroke around it. Probably not three pixels, just go back down to one. I don't know, maybe that needs a, a drop shadow and something else as well, but I'm just going to leave it for now. I think that's, that's plenty of design on it. The next thing that we need to worry about is going to be these guys right here. There's supposed to be these uh, three cells, and um, I'm a little concerned about the way they, they design this because I think it's, it's going to be a little odd, but one, uh, if you zoom in on this particular design, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking I'm in Photoshop. There we go. There's supposed to be a slight gradient on this gray area, uh, and then there's this line that goes all the way across, and that's where the. Um, it's supposed to be a line that divides the header from the text, but it goes all the way across. So if I want to recreate that, which I suppose I do, um, I have to be able to put that... Well, I, I will say the reason I don't like it is because if you expand the text, that line is probably not going to expand at the same time. If you hit Control Plus on the, the web page and it blows up the, the size, I'm afraid that the, the font won't match up to, to that and it won't look like it's in the right place. So I think what I'm going to do instead is design each of these independently and use this underline here and just make it part of the H3 or H2 that's in each of these. So it'll be its own standalone thing that is attached <coughs> to the text. So if the text gets bigger, this will fill up. Um, and then I'm pretty much just going to try and make each one of these the same. Now the way that the book or that the tutorial does this is 
it's a gradient from the top down straight, but then they take a brush and sort of add just a little bit of darkness to the left sides here in order to make this division line. That's really all it is. So if I want to do that, I've got to lay out some boxes here. So I need my lines. I'm going to grab, I need a new folder for this. It'll be three column. And there are a bunch of different ways that, that I can probably do this. Uh, I'm trying to think of the, one of the better ways. I'll do, yeah, a rectangle will work just fine. What's 960 divided by 3? Oops, shoot, it's not 960. It's going to be, what did that say? 880 divided by 3 does not work properly. Um, yeah. Um, shoot, that's not good. I didn't do my math right. What about like margins in between each thing? We could do that. Um, if there was if there was twenty pixels in between each, it would be eight forty. That would be divisible by three. What's eight forty divided by three? Two eighty. Two eighty. Is that right? Anybody check? Uh, I didn't hit enter. I want you to know I do this this kind of calculation stuff on the fly all the time. I never pay attention to my numbers until it's usually way too late. Oops, I added another one in there. So what I can do is I can take these three and align. I might I had it. Correct. Yeah, let the computer figure out the alignment on them. You guys use the distribute and align buttons up at the top? They are fan. I love them in Illustrator. I don't use them quite as much in Photoshop. Um, I think I've already messed up just a little bit. I think what I actually want to have happen is I want to do one of these as a smart object and have the other two just be copies of it. So if I want to do that, I'm going to take these two and throw them away. I'm going to take this guy and you can always right click and convert him into a smart object. He's a thing by himself. The cool thing about that is I can actually make duplicates of him. Here we go. And now if I go into rectangle 3, just double click on it, I can do pretty much anything I want to this. Get rid of that layer, I don't need him. And FX, gradient overlay, I'm going to do... The problem is I'm not actually looking at my design. going to be on white, so I need to do something a little subtle with it. Gradient, that's what I'm looking for. I want this one to be slightly white, down to white, put that there, and reverse that. So it's kind of just a nice little tan fade from the top. And then I save this. Hmm. You see, it updated all of them. You can barely see them though; they're really, really tiny. Um, how can I make these stand out a little bit more? Drop shadows might work. I think they just maybe like a just a line across the top. I don't know if that would work. Shapes. Line tool. I did that wrong. Where's all right, 
I'm just going to do this as a new layer and then use a pencil tool. I think because my screen is so incredibly small that this isn't showing up properly. they've been all the way around? What do you think? Why don't I try it? Instead of this, we'll do stroke on the inside of that lovely pink color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you can feel free to play with the colors and the text however you like when you're doing this. I, I'm more concerned that you get the, the Photoshop techniques down than creating exactly what they have there. Right. Yeah, this will be good enough. I think this will be perfectly fine. So what I'm going to need to do, I can create strokes in CSS really easily. Gradients are still a little bit of a problem. Um, and so I'm, not, I'm not putting these together. Um, yeah, I'm going to have a couple of gradients I'm going to slice up in order to make backgrounds on things in my in my page. The very last thing that the, the tutorial goes over is adding some little gradient thing that you can barely see to the footer so that you have a little bit of text down there. I, I'm just going to do that in um, as plain text in the, in the design. So I'm actually done with my Photoshop file, I believe anyway. It's lovely, isn't it? Okay, now it's Dreamweaver time. Now that I've got, let's say I go back and forth with the client and they say, no, we want two pixels <laughs> for our pink strokes and, and we just go back and forth with them for a while. Once we finally get a, um, the design finalized, then it's time to actually go to Dreamweaver. And I know that's kind of the opposite of the, what, what, the way that you guys have been working, um, but I'm gonna create I'm going to leave Photoshop up and create a new Dreamweaver site based on this guy right here. This is the folder where I've been putting my stuff. And I have to create a new one site. New site. Mockup. It's on my desktop. Somewhere it was. Photoshop mockup. And in here, I need to organize this. I'll create an images folder. I'll also create a work folder and everything but the mock-up is going to go in there. I need a index.html and a styles.css. In my index, I'm going to go ahead and link that There's nothing in it yet, but at least they're linked. Okay. Now, based on this Photoshop file, I have to think about where all of the divs are going to go, what divs I can replace with images or forms or links or something like that. So, wow, there's a lot to do here. Um, uh, usually, I would say start with a container. Let me go into the body here. Div ID equals container. Underneath of that, I'm going to have a header. Have you guys played with the HTML5 tags yet? Instead of ID equals header, you can actually literally just do header. And uh, you, I'll use a couple of these so you can see them. They, they are divs with, instead of IDs, they just made it the actual div tag. Um, there's going to be an image here. I'll turn this into a little graphic. Uh, and that's going to be inside the header. It's going to have img src equals images slash logo dot png. So it's going to have to be transparent. Um, and I'll give that an ID of logo. I don't know what the dimensions on it are going to be yet. The other thing that I need to have in there is that little sign up area. And I think what I'll end up doing is I'll make the header relative and make this 
absolutely positioned so I can shove it into the upper right corner exactly where I want it. So it's going to be a div with just these couple of links inside of it. Like that div ID equals sign up or register or something like that. Ahref equals sign up dot HTML or PHP, whatever. Sign up. Close that one, put it in a pipe. And then. Was that what it was? Register? Log in. That makes a little more sense. Login.html, and that'll be my login. And then I should close that. That div. Pretty boring so far. But I'm just getting my structure in. I don't really have anything else that I'm worried about yet. Underneath of that is going to be my nav. This is a new tag. Guess what it's for? Yeah, whatever your navigation is for your site, use that. Um, I'm going to use an unread list for this. So, home about services, home about services, product support and contact. And I've always loved this about unordered lists. Each one's now a, a link. So I'm only going to have one nav on the page, so I'll use that to select this unordered list and do the whole horizontal navigation bar thing. Um, after my nav needs to come the main guts of the body, which is going to be a section. And down at the very bottom, I'm also going to have, not a fonter, but a footer. And I don't know what I'm going to put in there. I think it's supposed to be just text links. Section is a just a generic box where you can put the guts of your content. It's, a, it's effectively div ID equals content. Um, there's also article. And these one, these uh, tags, that these new HTML5 tags that I just showed you are meant to be very, very generic. You can have as many navs on the page as you like. You can have four or five if you need to. If you need one in the sidebar and you want to have one across the top as your main nav and then there's some sort of little sub navigation under it, you can have as many of those as you like. Um, there's an article tag and a section tag. They're kind of the same thing. Um, if you prefer section, use that. If you prefer article, use that instead. Um, I, however you want to do it, it really doesn't matter. Um, and again, you can have as many footers on the page as you want. You're probably thinking, why would I want multiple footers or multiple headers? That pretty much comes out of blogging. So when you ha come to a blog and it's got 10 entries on the front page, each one has to have a header, each one has to have its article, each one has to have its own footer. And that's, uh, that's effectively one article, and every article should have that structure to it. That's why they, they put those tags in. HTML6 is probably going to have a whole bunch of new ones for other stuff that we'll figure out over the next 10 years. Anyway, inside here I need, I need to create this guy, so that'll be my big slider box, and then I need these three divs down here. And so this, these should go inside the section area. So I'm going to have, there isn't really a slider HTML equivalent, so I'm just going to do div ID equals slider. And then div class equal three column. word box in there. So I'll have all of those in there and with three column I can give them the, the same properties. I can float them all left but then I'm going to need to figure out a way to put 20 pixels of margin padding or margin on the middle one and I can do that probably the easiest way is if I just give that one its own ID. Um, I can write that one and just 
All of them will be float left because of the same class, but that one will get the extra padding in the middle, and we should, if our math, if my math adds up correctly, it shouldn't drop down to a new um, size. Um, I mean margin. Margin will it will give us the the gap between the boxes. Padding would actually push them up against each other. Is it home about services? something for the slider, at least the word slider. Uh, what else am I missing? I'm going to have to have these two buttons. This text, does it need to be... Yeah, the text is probably going to have to be in there, those three paragraphs. I'll have this as one giant background image. This will be part of the background image, that way I don't have to create as many um, graphics. And then these two buttons need to be images, that'll need to be a link. Ugh. Paragraph, paragraph, paragraph with a link, two buttons. Okay, that should do it in the slider. say learn more so, you know. let me unify this naming system there we go those will actually work now that uh, I think these probably also need an ID as well called something sign up already, didn't I? Div ID equals sign up. I can't do that again. Equals slider sign up. And this one will be ID equals slider learn more. Ugh, that's a horrible. And then the last thing I think I forgot was that in the navigation there's also supposed to be <coughs> a little search box. So if you've taken uh, Web 115, you probably know a little bit more about forms. That's the class where I really teach that. Forms have to have a, uh, I'll call it, give it an ID. This isn't necessary. Form, they have to have what's called a method, <coughs> and it should be set to post. Um, and an action is what page do you want the to go to when you click the search button. So this would be search dot HTML or search.php or something like that. Inside the form, I need two input buttons. One for the text box. This should be a submit button. Value equal search. I think that'll do it. There we go. So forms are a little bit weird, but that's the, the bare minimum that you need to make them work. Okay, did I miss anything? Do I have a box for everything in my CSS now, in my HTML? I think I do. Whew. Okay. Now, dear God, I gotta make all these selectors for all this junk. All right, so starting in my CSS, I need pound container. 
width 960 px. Margin zero auto. Uh, I'm trying to preview that. Wrong button. Not, I mean, something else. That's okay. Okay, it's centered. That's what I want to see. Uh, let's see if I can do my header. I want that one to be position relative so that it holds the the thing the images and stuff inside of it. <coughs> Width is going to be a hunt. I'll make it explicitly 960 pixels. Height. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Where did I do that? As control H R. Looks like I set that at exactly 200 pixels. So I'm going to make that 200 pixels right there. I coded something wrong. Header slash header. Why isn't that working? Uh, let's do this. It's called W I D T H, right? Width nine hundred and sixty pixels. Height two hundred. Why is Dream Weaver being a punk about this? I'm positive I'll figure that out later. I have something misnested. Actually, what am I doing? Dreamweaver has this. So, uh, window. Results. Validation. Doesn't like my alt tags, but that's okay. Hmm. I don't know what's going on. I spelled width correctly, didn't I? Sometimes I look at things so long I can't tell what they are anymore. It's working in the browser, so I'm okay with it. I bet if I do this... Uh, there's something slightly wrong. Uh, that's okay, I'm just going to leave it for now. So, the next thing on the list was going to be there's the the big header then I've got the image inside of the header and then the div so I'm going to do header IMG uh, did it have a ID equals logo I'm just going to use that instead and logo position absolute top I don't know, I'm just making stuff up at the moment. We'll figure out what the actual dimensions need to be a little bit later. 30, left, 0, um, I know those aren't going to be the correct values, but something's in there. And it's not pushing away from it. Let's see if I can get the. I wonder if Dreamweaver really is flipping out because there's no um, alt tags on those images.
that's not it. I don't see anything wrong, so I'm not sure what it is. You know, it's pushing it around in the browser, so... Yeah? Have you guys played with this? The web developer toolbar actually gives you little validators right here. This one's HTML, CSS, and that's JavaScript. Um, it says it's okay. Dreamy was just being a punk about it. So that means I kind of have to work this abstractly in my brain <laughs> without Dreamweaver giving me good feedback. Yay, I hate when this happens. Um, Alright, so then I just got to do the next one, which is going to be pound sign up, which is the little div that goes in the upper corner that will be position absolute top. right ones. Top is going to be zero and then right is going to be zero and that will shove it in the upper right corner. I have to preview it here. There we go. It's starting to come together. Um, nav bar, let me do that real quick. Nav unordered list. I'm going to use new buttons for this. Nav unordered list list items. Nav U L L I A colon link. Visited. Focus. Hover. Active. To make the nav bar, that's the stuff you need. The unordered list itself, individual list items, the A tags in the link and visited state, and then the other three hover-ish states. Okay. So with this one, I need to go to list, set it all to none, set the under box, set the padding and margin to none for all of the link list items. Same with, I'm sorry, that was the unordered list. I need to do the same with the list items. And the LIs needed to be float left. Now they're all on the same size, or on the same row. The A tags need to be turned into block level items. Suddenly there are little boxes that I can make into. Ooh, how high do we make those? Let's see, eyedropper. Forty-five. We give those a height of forty-five and a width of one hundred each. Squeeze that down just a hair. Okay. To fix what's going on wrong here, I have to align them to the, the text to the center, and then under type, set the line height to whatever the height of the object is. Dreamweaver really does not like this now. Not sure if that's that should not be correct. It should be the same height. I'm afraid that it's dream we were still being no, noisy about this, and uh, I'm gonna have to change that to 90. Let me add a background color to this. See if things are actually lining up the way they're supposed to. Huh? They are okay. That'll be fine. Um, Okay, then this guy, I gotta get him over to the right. Uh, I think one of the problems that I'm gonna run into is that my nav, because I've got these list items there floated, they're gonna do that weird collapse thing where things run, they overlap things that come after it. The best fix I can do for that, since I've got a height on these list items, I want them to be 90 pixels tall, or I'm sorry, 45 pixels tall. 
That's what I did wrong. I was doing the width, not the height, in my line height. Duh. Yeah, they were 45 high, so the line height should also have been 45. I was reading that. Anyway, what I was trying to say is that my navs should also have a height of 45 pixels so that... Oops, the wrong button there. So that my slider goes down and it's not trying to be overlapped by this or weird, do some weird text wrap. The search form, that one shouldn't be too difficult. What is that? Form ID equals search. I'm just going to do pound search um, float right. Just going to go over there. I can add padding or margin to push it down a little bit later, but it'll just always be over on the right side. Slider is going to be this giant big block in the middle of the page. Um, is it pound slider? That was the name of the div, correctly? Correct? Okay, cool. And this one's got some weird stuff on it. We took a couple of pixels off. I think it's supposed to be 30 pixels off. With 40 pixels, apparently, I took it with what I took off each side. So that means there's... It's not 960, it's 920, it's 880 is the width of this. I make the height. Three, it's probably 350. It says 351, but that little ruler is notoriously always a pixel off. So slider is taking up all of this space now. Let me give it a background color so I can see what it's doing. Got a bunch of space over here because I need 80 on each side. So I'm going to do margin it's supposed to be 40, right? So I'm just going to do 40 pixels on all sides. I think that'll that'll give me the design that I'm looking for. Yeah. Cool. I do it in one place and set everything that I need. Um, yeah, that'll work. Okay, now the little boxes down here. Uh, they have a class on them, right? That's all right. What do I call them? Here they are, my three columns. So class three column, dot three column, float left, and width of 280. Am I remembering that correctly? And I gotta put a background color on this, background dash color. We'll find out. Yeah, I think that's about right. Maybe. So it looks like I need to have 40 pixels here, 40 pixels on the end, 20 and 20. Blech. All right. Um, well, the problem is, and this is what I didn't consider, is that... I can just put it on the middle one, but it'll only give me the 20 pixels here and to the right of it, but it's not going to help me with this one. So there's a couple of ways that I can do this, and I think the easiest is just to give this a cl uh, an ID as well and tell it to push off 40 from the, the left edge. On the body? Or on the container? Yeah, but it's going to push this, this, and this all over by 40 pixels as well. Everything up here would get pushed. So... Um, 
I could do that as well. That was also running through my head. I could put another, like a, just a three column con- div around this entire thing, another container, and push it over just like I did this top one, and then do one thing in, in each one. I like doing it with as few divs as possible. Um, so I'm going to see if I can do it without. But yes, that is a perfectly valid way to do it. Um, this does mean that I need to give IDs to all of these. And middle is an awful name for a, a CSS selector. It's actually one of the worst possible names I could have come up with. So the first one's supposed to be news, the second one's supposed to be featured, and the sec- third one is supposed to be our services. So that's those are more appropriate names. So the first one will be ID equal news services and the last wait no that's not right featured and then the last one will be services uh, what did I spell wrong you don't spell services that way <laughs> Okay, so now I've got these. They're all floated left. Um, now I can grab each one and give them their own design elements, essentially. I can say the three column. Okay, so they're all got that. And then I'm going to do dot three column pound news. I could do it as just news, but since they're all part of three column, I will. Oh no, it's, that's not right. It's not news inside of three column. News and three column are both applied to the same object. Sorry, that a descendant would descendant selector would not work in this instance. The first one will we'll get pushed over 40, the middle one gets 0 on top and 20 left and right. Oh my gosh, I think it works. Home is coming up here because it's not cleared. Yeah. Correct. Um, however, when, I, when you actually get into doing the fonts, if I wanted to be able to control these differently, I, I find that that's actually kind of useful. So I need to clear my footer. That's just a regular footer. Clear both. And let's do margin top of 40 pixels. That appears to be the number I've, I've got. And then text align center. I think it's still not working. For some reason, this margin top wasn't working, so I just put a margin bottom on these boxes, and that appeared to shove this, these guys away. Um, the boxes, the three column boxes, if I want them all to be the same height, um, but still expandable beyond that, there's a really nice min height function. Uh, 100 pixels. They'll all be 100 pixels tall, unless one of them gets too much information. Then it will expand. So, haha. I can't, there's not too many ways to make them all always the same height. Um, there's nothing, yeah, there's nothing out there that says link the heights of separate boxes together. CSS won't exactly do that. But at the very least, I can specify a minimum height. 
I can specify a maximum height as well, um, so that it only expands to a certain size. I don't know that that's actually going to help me in this. I think what actually is going to be best, if, instead of min height, I just say height. And 100 is a little bit short. There we go. This is the exact evolution that all my websites go through. I, I do it in Photoshop, and then I sit here and block everything out. Um, I find it much easier now to go back in and know, oh, I, I just need to play with the slider area. I just need to play with this particular box or that one. Um, it works a lot better this way. Uh, what else should I do I need to, to do? I think that's about it. Okay, now we need to get the images in. The text I'm not going to worry quite as much about, and in 20 minutes, yes, I can do this. Okay. First off, creation box, logo, sign up. This is going to be, yeah, I've already got them sliced up. Ooh, I was smart. Here are the two graphics that are going to be part of my background. This one. Can somebody close that door? Dylan, would you mind? Or Gene? Thanks. Tell them to quit it. <laughs> um, little tiny sliver right here for my gradient. Do you remember me talking about that last week? It, um, gradients 255 or 256 is about the maximum le levels that any two color gradient can possibly have. Um, so unless you add more colors in there, you really shouldn't be making an, a little gradient slice bigger than that um, and that's just because pixels on the on the computer monitor can only produce 255 levels of a color um, anyway so that'll be one that I'd name it so incredibly small body background and body background 2 body background 2 is going to be this monstrosity Bar. it's huge um, but I need to save these out now I'm going to grab this little guy. There we go. Now I got him. Uh, he's going to be a GIF at 256 colors. Wow, I actually could have made it bigger. It's somehow, it's not using up all 256 colors because my gradient stops way up here. Okay, that's why. So, I'm not too worried that's going to be slightly over a kilobyte. I'm okay with that. Uh, then this one is the one that's going to be kind of nasty. 50k is a JPEG. 30, 20k, that's a little bit better. Ugh. 45. Forty-five is a little bit more livable. I know you guys probably can't see the detail quite as much. Most of this is going to get overridden with text and other things, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, yeah, I think that'll work. Save, desktop, Photoshop mockup, images only, save it. Ah, they gave me the extra ones, I don't need those. I just need body and body background too. So, the gradients are going to have to, or the, these images are going to go on the body as background images. So, background dash image. I'm going to do that one. Wait a minute, I'm doing that wrong. Use the interface here. Do that one, apply it, repeat. I think I'm doing that right. I can never remember if I... Yes. Okay. So that's going to slide all the way across the top. Then what I need to do is do it again. Actually, I think 
I don't know that Dreamweaver likes this so much anymore, or ever did. screwing up all the URLs. Images. That might have been it. Okay. Any idea what's going wrong? Do you know what? why it's being weird? Do you see this giant gap right here? So this image is being repeated across the top, and then that big image that I created before, it looks like it's lining up nicely, but then it just kind of stops here. What's actually going on is this one is on top, and this one's underneath. And that is actually determined by the order in which you specify them. So I just need to reverse these. And I did something a little bit wrong. I need to get the commas in the right place, and then that one should be a semicolon. Now, ha! It looks like I didn't quite get the, the slicing down exactly right. I should probably pull that in a little bit. I can actually do that in Photoshop because I made that part of my background. That is this layer, I believe. If I squeeze that in and just resave it out, and just this one. Selective slice, save it, replace. Dreamweaver might even like it. Uh, there we go. So what I was doing there is effectively I'm trying to make sure that this image fades out into the same white that this fades down into. And now it all kind of matches up. There's some weird stuff happening right here, but I can kind of live with that. Doesn't look like there's much further to go, is there? There's not. Um, I need to get rid of this red. That's horrible. So where's styles? That was header. Go away. Oh. All right. So my logo here. Now, if I try to go in and simply slice this this out as it is um, and then I'd have to match it up perfectly by the pixels so that it would match up with the background what would be better is if I could just slice out this box but then have it give it a transparent background and then I can have some freedom to play with it and push it wherever I want um, the only way to do that is with a PNG 24 image that's going to increase my file size quite a bit. PNG 24s tend to be big files, but it's definitely doable. So if I take this slice and I do this, just so you know what has immediately happened is the big slice that was around the whole thing, that's gone now. It doesn't work anymore. Um, I think it might be, it's that one now. They're all, they're all body beachy too. <laughs> So I'm just going to worry about this one for the moment. And really all i got to do is if I turn off the background layer, and once you see the, the gray and white checkerboard pattern, that's how tr uh, Photoshop tells you something's transparent. Um, so I'm going to call this one Logo. And if I make this a PNG24 with transparency turned on, interlaced appears to add 14 kilobytes, so let's leave that alone. And there's not much that you can do with PNG 24s. You basically turn transparency on or off or turn interlaced on and off. There's no compression for it because transparency really does not do well with any type of um, compression. So I'll save that. Selected slices image only. And I, how big is that? 409 by 136. 
So back in Dreamweaver, that's going to be width 409 by what? 136. And did I save it right? What name did I give that? Images logo.png. This should show up. Ha <laughs> ha. What else we got to do? The the navigation bar that might be the what? Oh yeah. Since that's uh, yeah, let's get all the graphics in first. So back to Photoshop. I'm going to have to do the same with this big thing here, the slider, but I'm going to have to turn certain layers on and off. I don't want the buttons or the text, just this. And I don't know if this is going to get the uh, stroke or not, but I'm just going to call it slider-bg. And JPEG, 40 kilobytes, uh, just 45 do. That's okay. 26, 27 kilobytes, I could live with that. Slider, let's get rid of yellow as the background and set this guy as the background. Looks like my outline didn't come through, or my border, so I'm going to have to add that. Solid, one pixel, I think that's it. Now, that will probably screw something up, and I'll show you what. are still aligned. Borders are supposed to add in the same way that padding does. So if I add one pixel of padding to the left and the or one pixel of border to the left and right, I should take two pixels off of the width um, in order for things to stay up, stay aligned. And I think it's just that this is zoomed in too far now. It doesn't actually show up. I'm not sure if it's doing it or not. At this height, I think it is just a little bit. But this seems okay. Out, correct. Outline won't do that because outline um, does not add to the width. In fact, I probably could have done that as an outline instead. Um, what I'll do 407 just to make my math add up. It's That was the wrong thing. Wasn't it? That was the width of logo that needed to be slider. I saw it jump just a hair, but uh, I think that, that did it. Uh, my text, my little graphics here, um, those are just going to be little... Again, these graphics, I'm just going to slice them up, just like I did. Ah, but the problem is I've got this slider slice. I'm going to have to end up deleting a whole bunch of slices. That's why I, I don't particularly like about this design is you can't have slices on top of slices. At least not easily. Make 
those PNGs. With a little transparency, cool. Save. There's nothing you can do for them. Selected slices. Dreamweaver. You see what happened? One of them got was a little too close. So get right on that drop shadow. Same settings, just override them. Dreamweaver, they're now different sizes, so I've got to do that. We'll shrink them back down to their original size. Okay. Pulse. I'm doing wheat. What is that? I have no idea why it's doing that. Did I set a height on them in the CSS? No. I don't know what it's doing. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to leave it for now. The last thing I want to do is, is get these three boxes um, in the next three minutes nice and figured out. And really all I need is going to be one little tiny slice. I'm not getting that correctly. Call it box dash bg. Made it a little bit bigger so I can actually click on it. Uh, JPEG, GIF, 256. Actually, JPEG at pretty high quality turned out to be a little bit smaller, so I'll use it as a JPEG. Oops. Save. Dreamweaver, each box needs to be away. We don't need server behaviors in this class. Three column background, get rid of the horrible blue. Box background. Um, I'll just make it repeat X across the top. And that way I, you can change the height all you want as long as it's a little bit higher than the, the rest of it. Uh, those are also supposed to have a border Solid, one pixel. What was this one? And if I'm going to do that, then I need to change this to just take two pixels off of each one. So you can see I still have a little bit more to go. Um, uh, zero, zero, zero. If, I'm, if you really want to add padding on the inside of these, then you would also have to take that add padding, subtract width. Um, actually, I'll do that real quick. Box, I'll add 10 pixels of padding and make this 258. There we go. Uh, the reason this one's up top is because my paragraphs actually have a great deal of margin on them. If you want to get rid of that, write a selector for your paragraphs, give them zero pixels of margin and padding, and yeah, paragraphs will actually do weird things with margin and, and padding. Set them to zero. And then I gotta start doing the same up here. But there you go. Whew. It's only two hours long, that tutorial. So, what questions do you have before I let you go? Good?